Um, where would you like to kick off, Steve? Because you've done an interesting uh, rebuttal to uh, an interesting piece regarding type 2 diabetes recently. So Yeah, uh, Sarah kindly uh, gave me some good comments just now. Yeah, I did a, a debunking of the Harvard Red Meat Causes Diabetes study, a little 11-minute video with all the basic facts. And as Sarah so rightly pointed out, quite a few people have done a, um, a takedown Dr. Uh, Zoe Harkham's done a brilliant uh, website piece about it. I mean, to me, because I'm a specialist practitioner in obesity and diabetes, it, it's mystifying because all I see is people eating this way um, and reversing type 2 diabetes. And also, as I said in my video, I don't want to repeat too much of it, but um, I'd rather you go and look at it. But um, in 10 years of coaching, I have never seen anyone develop type 2 diabetes eating this way. That's never happened. But I have definitely seen remissions. And I, I looked at my notes. There's over 100 people that had type 2 diabetes or were pre-diabetic. And I am one of those people, by the way. And they included red meat in their diet. And they just basically took out grains, wheats, refined carbohydrates, and they put their type 2 diabetes in remission. Uh, not just by hearsay, but by bloods as well. You know, I'm a qualified phlebotomist. A lot of them come with bloods that they've already got. And it's quite clear from their fasting glucose and their insulin production, their C-peptide, from their HbA1c, that diabetes is long gone. And red meat is in that diet for most of those people in quite a big way. So when the Harvard study came out, which is riddled with issues, 14 quantifiable, visible, easily spotted issues um, and conflicts of interest. I mean, Walter Willett, the, one of the authors there, receiving between $455,000 to almost as much as $1.5 million from companies interested in vegetarian and vegan diets. You know, when, when, you're, when your academic place of work is getting those sort of contributions – you're not going to say that vegan or vegetarian diets is not the way to go. I mean, you know, um, that's a lot of money. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, my wife yesterday about the morals of it because, you know, we're going through a financially hard time right now. And she said, well, if someone offered me one and a half million pounds, I probably would take it and say that vegan <laughs> and vegetarian is good. But the more, and, and yeah, and I get, totally get that, by the way. And, but the more we talked about it, the both both of us realised we won't be able to sleep at night because it's doing people a disservice. So, uh, and I'm not putting the begging bowl out. I'm just saying that other people wouldn't necessarily feel like that. And you know, if you've got big commitments, you've got lots of debts, or you've got something, you know, people working for you. And I'm not excusing him, but I'm just saying. You know, if you've got 30 people in your faculty, all got jobs, all got mortgages and stuff like that, and you get a one and a half million dollar donation, it's not such an easy conversation as the one I had with my wife, where it's just us. I, I'm not employing people. Okay, so that's that's me playing devil's advocate. But in reality, I think it's shocking, scandalous, and, and borderline fraudulent to actually say it so categoric that, um, you know, red meat causes type 2 diabetes because there's just no way that mechanism is proven. There's no cause and effect statement. It's all associations. It's just ridiculous. So anyway, I hope people see um, what's out there. I think Sean Baker has done a couple of pieces on it. I, uh, Zoe Harkham. I'm trying to think who else. Probably Dr. Paul Mason. If he hasn't, he probably will do. So, yeah, there's loads loads of information out there to look at it. But it's it's terrible that the mainstream media ignored people like Dr. David Unwin, who in April 2023 was featured in The Guardian, uh, I would say newspaper, but it's not really. Um, it's just a publication. But anyway, they covered the story of his brilliant successes of getting people into remission on type type two from type 2 diabetes by eating ketogenic. So um, there's just too much proof that this Harvard red meat study is absolute rubbish. So uh, so that's my welcome to the people of Facebook. Uh, so if you've not seen me before, I, I tend to go on as much as Rich sometimes, and uh, <laughs> certainly like. when I feel passionate <laughs> about it. So I've done five minutes on that one subject. So anyway, yes, hello, everybody, and welcome the people on YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah. so just... Just to tag on to the to the the back end of that. So Steve, you reversed your 
type 2 diabetes. I have reversed mine, and Sarah has reversed hers. Um, so there's three people here who predominantly eat nothing but red meat, um, all of which have lost. I mean, Sarah's lost six and a half stone. Uh, I've lost 107 pounds. I'm unsure how much weight you've lost, but health has improved across the board uh, in, in all metrics. Um, I've personally gone from being unable to walk up the stairs without stopping or being severely out of breath, um, suffering with daily debilitating migraines, chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, arthritic pains, uh, amongst other things, um, to thrive in within this lifestyle. And I know Sarah has done the same. Sarah, um, a neurophysiologist, so by far from um, you know a, 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 a silly, uneducated person, became type 2 diabetic and suffered with diabetes for 23 years uh, and then managed to reverse her diabetes within as little as two weeks uh, through eating predominantly a meat-based diet and has now this year qualified for Team GB in her first year of competing in triathlon. So, I mean, I can't un understand how anybody can say that eating red meat causes cancer. Red meat, sorry, diabetes even, or, or cancer for that matter, Red meat is the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. Um, and it is the only, it's the only um, food that uh, does not cause any issues within the human body in regards to, to gut health. Um, so there are arguments against other forms of meat, fish, eggs, cheese, and things. But red meat is the, particularly beef, is the only source of food that does not cause any issues whatsoever. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your journey, sir? Um, well, yeah, I'm sure, you know, people people have heard my journey um, countless times. Um, but yeah, it was um, life changing. And from 2020 to 2021, over a period of 11 months, obviously, um, having nutritional advice from Rich, um, I lost six and a half stone following initially a low carb and then ketogenic diet. Um, as you you know transition into it, I think you don't you don't tend to go straight into uh, the deep end. Um, but yeah, initially low carb, trying to you know cut out all of the grains, seed oils, and ultra processed food as well. Um, and then yeah, turned turned my health around basically because I reversed my type two diabetes. As you said, my my bloods weren't um, tested as frequent as I would have liked because it was COVID. Um, but I knew that, you know, health-wise, I was feeling so much better um, in myself. And um, when I was able to get my blood test done and, and see the diabetic nurse practitioner within my surgery, she was, you know, astounded as to, um, well, A, how much I look different. <laughs> Um, because she didn't recognize me and and be all of my you know parameters were low not even you know within within normal my like my hba1c had come down to like 30 odd which was much much better than the 60s that it was um previously it, it was really high um obviously i was injecting myself with medication for my diabetes at the time um but yeah with the reduction of um, the type 2 diabetes, also my high blood pressure, which I'd suffered with since I'd had my children, like 20 odd years, um, medicated, that all disappeared because obviously the insulin resistance had improved. Um, so I was health wise, I was much, much, much healthier than I was the year previous. Um, I'd also suffered with like rheumatoid pain. Um, obviously an uh, autoimmune issue, um, which, you know, there's a lot of people in my family who have autoimmune issues. Um, and we've, my sister and myself um, had rheumatoid issues. My sister's, you know, much, much better with hers, even though she's on treatment, whereas mine has disappeared. Um, it's totally gone into remission and I, I don't suffer with joint pain, but my diet obviously is super strict. Um, I'm carnivore now and I find that's the the main way um, to sustain being healthy and fit for myself. But yeah, as you mentioned, Rich, I've, I, once I lost the weight, I started exercising, started running, did couch to 5k to London Marathon within a year, and then did it again six months later, just to try and improve my time, which I did for by 10 minutes. 
which is a big chunk in a marathon time. And um, and yeah, started triathlon in May this year. And, you know, I've, I've done pretty well for my first year of triathlon. I'm happy with how it's going. And yeah, culminating now with a with a, a GB age group qualification for European Championships next year, which I'm really looking forward to. And I can't see how eating any differently would, you know, would sustain um, my health and fitness. This this is the only way that uh, I'll be moving on, you know, forward. And if if we just look at how other people have performed, you know, fantastic, not um, professionals like Dr. Dan Plews, who's, um, you know, a scientist and an amateur athlete, but he's a he's a professional coach in triathlon who eats low carb, promotes low carb, and um, you know lives the way himself and his athletes um, are world class. Obviously, he's just broken um, the age group um, world record for Ironman um, in in a in a race. So he's doing fantastically well as well as other people. So it goes to show that it can be done, and that. You know, I didn't need carbs to do anything. So it's, um, yeah, it's the way forward. Sorry, I, I could talk just as much as you lot as well. <laughs> yeah, you beat me. I think you did six minutes. That's brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And that's the thing. I mean, Tom, we just had Tom put this comment up. Uh, I recently came to the conclusion that we should pay attention to anecdotes. We can't wait for randomized controlled trials to come. And when they do, they're not done properly anyway. In the end, you care about your own N equals one. And and that's true. I mean, Rich brilliantly summed up this screen. Okay, there's three of us here. And uh, we're completely met randomly. So we're random. So three people, if you put a, put a questionnaire through our door, have you ever been pre-diabetic or diabetic? We'd all tick yes. Do you eat red meat? Yes. <laughs> we do. Uh, and lots of it. <laughs> but Lots of it. Have you ever reversed it? Yes. When we started eating lots of red meat. You see, this is the thing. Um, you could cut that at the question, do you eat red meat? Ah, yeah. So they all, that's why they all got that diagnosis originally. But no, it was actually after the diagnosis that most of us ramped up our eating red meat and it, and it reversed it. So I think... Anecdotes really, I mean, there's an old joke about, you know, when I did my, um, I've got two degrees in my life, both honours degrees, one in English and one in science. And the joke is about plagiarism. If you, uh, if you, if you copy one study, that's plagiarism. But if you copy 15 studies, that's research. See, so even a research paper, which has all these references, is, is basically anecdotes in the end. It's still people saying to researchers, yeah, I took this X, Y, Y. Z thing and I feel better or it's observed it's still people looking at things and, and giving you data so if you got 100 people in a room and you just went around and asked them questions about their life and it was a random selection you just went into Wales and said right 100 people to come to a church hall and we just can ask you questions that's that's research for me I, I, that's research yeah. all right it's not clinical it's not randomized really but you're still going to get some good data from that. And it, obviously, the more of your sample size, the better. And then if you take out vested interests and biases and you report what you hear, and this is, you know, sorry, I'm going back down sort of like the nutritional science route here. If you actually take at face value what everyone says, you don't adjust it, you, you don't manipulate it, you just report what you hear. And if you hear oh, there's three voices over in that corner. They all had diabetes and they all reversed it with red meat. Maybe I should exclude that or look for other reasons why that happened rather than the red meat. See, this is this is what I mean about biases. That, that's what would happen. And if I was funded by someone that has told me we really need to get these 100 people to prove that red meat is bad, you know, us three in the corner, we're a problem, aren't we? So we do everything in our power to raise up the people that are sitting in the other corner who, um, you know, are doing worse with their red meat, but that's because the red meat's in a sandwich or in a lasagna or on a pizza or stuff exactly. like that. And that, that, and that is exactly, and that's exactly the point. Sorry, Rich, yeah. that is exactly it's the point, true. isn't it? That they, the meat that they were looking at was in lasagna or on a pizza or in, in a baguette or something. It wasn't like a, a rump steak. Mm. It, these people were eating meat with a lot of carbohydrates, wasn't it? 
and the issue yeah. with the the funding i was reading last week that coca-cola are the biggest funders of all research in america um I, I i forget how many millions it was but they provide the most money for scientific research and then that's without like pepsi and nestle and all the other ones that that are funding as well but coca-cola you know are, are wanting research that obviously shows their product or things linked to their products in good light doesn't it so yeah sorry Rich. Also, i mean it, yeah it's just to reiterate what you just said really i mean there are um other factors involved when we look at other studies um uh there was a big study that came out in um 2015 that covered over 800 studies in regards to red meat causing cancer out of those 800 only 14 actually showed any at all uh, but the reality was that only one out of those 14 um showed any correlation and that one was funded by the seventh day adventists of america who are a religious group who advocate for a vegan lifestyle um and this isn't anything against vegans or or, or any which way but it just goes to show that out of those 800 studies there were in fact zero that showed any correlation to cancer but the headline read red meat causes cancer so this is how studies are manipulated but a lot of the studies within this this paper covered uh people who are meat eaters uh, and as sarah rightly said if you eat a pizza you are a meat eater um but pizzas contain vegetable seed oils high in the oxidized omega-6 linoleic acid they contain lectins which cause intestinal permeability and they're high in excess carbohydrates so pizza is probably one of the most unhealthiest things that you can eat uh, because it isn't just high in sugar it's very high in lectins and uh, the oxidized omega-6 linoleic acid uh, and in there lies the problem because if you eat a pizza just because there may be protein on there or meat on there then you were classed as a meat eater but the difference with us is that the three of us predominantly only eat meat and that is the only way you are ever going to get uh, a true result is by removing all the other um confounding factors in regards to vegetables and and uh, nuts and seeds and whatever else it is we only eat meat predominantly um yes we're only human we may deviate now and again but i eat steak every day i eat red meat every day and there's this there's, there's something within our dna in the chromosomes um which governs how long or we're able to tell how long that we uh that we live um, and they're called uh, telomeres. The telomeres are little caps on the end of our chromosomes. And every time the cell divides, this cap becomes shorter and shorter and shorter. And the cell um, is unable to divide. And this is how we age. And this is this this leads to 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 death. Basically, the longer that we can keep these um, these uh, telomeres there, that the longer and healthier that we are going to be. There's only one thing on the planet which has been scientifically proven to increase or, or basically uh, uh, slow the degradation of these, these telomeres down. And that doesn't come from a plant. It doesn't come from anything man-made. It doesn't come from medication. It comes from red meat. Red meat is the only thing that is proven to extend the life of these telomeres. So you cannot say that red meat reduces lifespan, causes wow. diabetes or cancer, when it is in fact the only thing that increases the length of these telomeres on the chromosomes. Red meat is the most nutrient dense food on the planet. And I know we all live different lifestyles in regards to low carb, dirty keto. And, and I, I'm a supporter of all of these things, as, as you know. Uh, but to say that red meat causes diabetes or, or anything else for that matter is just, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But I think we could probably go on and on and on about this. But um, which brings me around to something that the three of us have um have been working on recently uh in regards to um a mighty networks group uh oh, there we are and there it is so steve has been working incredibly hard behind the scenes um we've set up uh on steve's mighty networks this um uh, a group a supportive group that we can all be part of that we're still building we're not super active in there currently um but we are hoping to be incredibly active soon. And it's, it's, it's going to be a supportive network to help people all along their journey with uh, advice. Uh, it's free to join. 
And as you can see, one of the posts in there recently was a, a podcast that I recorded with Professor Tim Noakes, which has had in, in that little snippet there, I think it says 25,000 views. It's had over 40,000 now, 40,000 views uh, with the interview that I did with Professor Noakes. Um, lots of other tidbits to go in there. Uh, we'll be doing lives. And we've also recently launched in there um, our Fat Club. Now, a fat club is something that Sarah and I um, brought out, developed, invented, if you like, going back last year, beginning of last year, January 2022. We launched uh, an in-house fat club in, in our shop in uh, on the high street in, in, in South Wales. It was incredibly successful. Uh, it was an eight-week course where people would come and take part in this course week on week where we would introduce one little tip, one one uh, little piece of information to change week on week. So rather than going knee deep into this lifestyle and not understanding, every week we would we would make one change and we would back it up with the evidence. So we wouldn't just tell you to do one thing. We would explain why you need to do this and why the not doing it causes a problem. And at the end of the eight weeks, you would have the knowledge to, to move forward and make healthy decisions, whether you decided to be low carb, ketogenic or not, you would be armed with the knowledge to make a change in your life moving forward. Um, so that was an incredibly successful course. We, we were packed out week on week. And one of the biggest things that, um, that we had from the course was that people from away, away from South Wales, away from Neath, lucky buggers, <laughs> um, who could not attend, uh, they wanted an online version. Now, this is, is now online. Steve's been working incredibly hard to fill the gaps. There, is, there are videos and little pieces of information, advice and little tidbits every day along the journey over, uh, over the length of this six weeks course. Now, it's free to join. The Mighty Networks is free to join. So we'll get a link popped in below once this goes live on, on Facebook and, and YouTube. Um, and the course then is £25 a month to run, and it's uh, it, it's a 60-day or eight-week course. Um, but it's incredibly insightful, lots of uh, lots of advice and, and uh, hints and tips. Um, and I think that the course, Sarah, that we did was it was absolutely brilliant. We did, you know, we presented this to people with diabetes, people who clients you were working with on uh, with diabetes at UK. Um we worked with your sister who suffered with kidney and liver problems. You know, we've worked with cancer patients, um, all sorts of things, uh, severe IBS, gastrointestinal issues, advanced polycystic kidney disease. The list goes on and on and on. Everybody that, um, that came onto the course sort of benefit or complete resolution of, of, of the things that they, they came to us with. But Steve's been working really hard and, and there it is. So it's, it's free to join. The course is £25 per month. Uh, and it lasts two months. Um, do you guys want to add anything to that? I mean, it's it's an incredibly insightful course, isn't it? And it's way more just, information available now than, than there was prior to that, you know? Yeah, just, just while we're on that screen, on uh, 5 p.m. in the UK, uh, in the Mighty Networks, we're doing a live question and answer every Monday at 5 p.m. So one of the reasons... I was keen to do that is because a lot of people have messaged me about Sean Baker's meetings, which used to run at 5 p.m. in the UK, um, 9 a.m. in some of the American time zones. And he used to do that every single day at 5 p.m. UK time. So um, that's not happening so much now. So I thought it would be a nice time slot for people that are missing those regular meetings. So we're going to be doing that within the Mighty Networks as well. But yeah, but Sarah obviously has got more to say because she ran it when you were doing your face-to-face -face things. Yeah, I think everybody who attended the Fat Club or Healthy Living Club, as we, as we did transition the name, um, because people were confused about the name fat, but it's because we eat fat, not because we are fat, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that, that was the reasoning behind it. Um, but yeah, lots of people found um, it to be, you know, more of a supportive community and I think being able to bring that to an online platform as well will definitely help the people who couldn't access us face to face. Um, there's still a possibility of running face to face for those local to us. Um, but for those who you know are not local or worldwide, for example, they can access this now online. Fantastic information that you've provided, Stephen, as well to top up our um, our presentations. 
um, and information that we provided, you know, for our um, local community then. Um, they definitely found being part of a community can provide you with um, accountability and, you know, just being able to have somebody to talk to while you're entering this journey um, because it can be a bit daunting and there's so much information that you you sometimes have to, you know, go over things more than once to be able to understand and uh, even remember. Um, so, so there's, you know, lots of educational resources um, and as you mentioned, rightly so, oh, thanks for that. Um, you mentioned rightly so that um, you've put me off my train of thought now <laughs> that um, people people will um, interact with it, hopefully, and be able to glean so much more information about living this lifestyle that they'll be able to, you know, be up here on Facebook Lives and um, podcasts in the future because they will have this wealth of knowledge that that we have gained throughout our own journeys as well. So, so yeah, thank you for my picture. Much appreciated. Well, that's a, I think it's a fantastic picture um, <laughs> because that the difference between those pics um, was little over a year or under a year. No, that that's the, the most recent one with me with my medal was only four weeks ago. So, so these pictures are, you know, a couple of years apart, but I'm the same size now as what I was when I lost the weight. I haven't, right. I haven't, um, I haven't lost any further weight um, because even though my body composition has changed, it's literally, I've probably increased a little bit more muscle than what I had when I initially lost the weight due to the training. But yeah, yeah. same, same sort of, um, difference really yeah which is incredible and while you were talking there i'm trying to find another image because the other gentleman in that picture with you is your husband mark <laughs> yeah. um who is also a, a triathlete and has also lost a tump of weight yeah um and yeah, I well, he, he was the reason i started because he was doing it before me and he was doing it for you know to lose the weight for athletic performance he didn't have health issues like I did, but he encouraged me to do it for the health issues as well. Yeah. And with Steve's permission, I've just popped this up there. So yes, Mark began his journey for athletic. So everybody begins this for different reasons and their vanity, but I mean, that's why I began. Uh, but I've I've stayed because of, of the health benefits. And the two of you have lived this lifestyle yeah, uh, and seen incredible years. benefits. Uh, and Mark is, uh, I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but he's um, uh, 50 something. No, he's he's not 50 yet. He's younger he's than not, me, Rich. Right, Toy okay. <laughs> 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 he's, I like he's, it. He's 50 at Christmas now. So. Right. But 50 at Christmas and the healthiest and fittest he's ever been. Year Definitely. on year, he has been, since he's been living this lifestyle, at his time's uh, on Ironman and triathlons and, and things have been improving. And he's he's been putting it to some of the other athletes in the club that, that you guys run the Ferry Flatliners, and he's been beating athletes half his age almost. Um Yay. you know, so it definitely it, it adds weight to 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 the lifestyle, isn't it? I mean, so look, we've got you know, there's four people there now that we've put on the screen who are all predominantly um carnival. Mark, I know is um is a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you know, he still yeah. enjoys a, a beer on weekends and things like that. So yeah, just to show that you don't... Sorry, he likes a low carb and he and he will eat a little bit of um, like salad. Um, he's not as strict as um, as us. As we are, yeah. But it just goes to show that it's, yeah. there the is something diet. there for everybody. There's something there for everybody. You don't have to, because people I think see this, this lifestyle as being super extreme and it doesn't have to be. You need to find where you want to reside on on this ladder or this this corridor this path because there there is a place for everybody on there even if it it is um you know just removing one or two main offending uh you know compounds that are causing issues within the human body um but yeah there we are there's another pick so i mean look look it's it's an absolutely fantastic course i wish that this was available when i began my journey because it took me an awful long time um, for me to fall into every pitfall that you can imagine and learn, you know, the things I've learned through my mistakes, which is probably the best way to learn. Uh, and this is why, you know, the three of us are doing this, isn't it? Is so that, um, you know, the, the listeners don't have to 
make our exactly. mistakes. You know, we we can circumvent those and, and they can fast track uh, and reach the benefits a lot quicker than than the three of us did. But um yeah. But yeah. I think I think you have to have um you know a sounding board or somebody that you can ask questions to as well. So even if they join the fat club, you know, I'm sure there's a uh, provision within the mighty networks to be able to ask the questions and get support from us um who will be you know actively in the group as well answering questions and other members who have the same you know journey experiences so i think it's uh, it'll be really beneficial for people to have the accountability and the community support which is i think um essential for when you when you're doing this yeah, just to jump in there really quickly as well. Uh, the fat addict Adam has just put a comment on there. Uh, fat club going online is absolutely amazing. Hopefully, people who uh, have been scared to come to the shop will now finally start their journey. Uh, yeah. This is Adam. Um, so yeah, Adam and I had a chat many moons ago, and he is now well on uh, his journey of I think you know Adam. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's something like eleven stone and counting. Uh, you know, and this, I'll be honest, when when I do consultations with people, you get a good idea of whether they go in to, to stick to something or not. And I didn't think that Adam would. And there's other people who I thought would smash it who who haven't. And I, I that includes elite level athletes who are used to training and being super strict. Adam is absolutely crushing it. And he's doing it incrementally. He's not doing it to any extremity. Uh, he's making incremental changes. Um, and, you know, this is... This is 180 pounds. Oh, we are fantastic. I mean, that's that's a person and a half, isn't it? You know, it yeah. um that's absolutely incredible. So there's evidence after evidence after evidence, and you don't have to be super strict, as we say, but it's it's all about, as Sarah said, having this sound wall, this support group, uh, a group of people you can bounce off. And this is why the mighty networks is is has been set up uh in order to to create this community where we can all help each other. Um, uh, and I'm super excited, so I, I can't wait to start kicking kicking things live with this and, and pushing forward and, and seeing what we can achieve. Exciting times! Yeah, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the comments uh, for now, and also when this has stopped going out live, I'll put links in the description. Um, one of the things I was going to just show you, by the way, was something I posted um, this morning. Because we're talking about anecdotes, and uh, one of the things I want to talk about is how the press will word even a good story. So, you know, you've got record-breaking Yosemite climate credit, strange diet for success. They just can't be magnanimous. Now, this, this guy has broken all sorts of records for climbing. And um, if you read the copy, which I've, I've just put a little bit up there, his, excep his, his exceptional diet of meat, salt and water seems to have given him unusual strength and endurance. And he took no water or food on the run up to the route. So all of us who are in this keto space know what he's doing. He's working out fasted and he's fat adapted. And it's amazing. Now, rather than saying, isn't this incredible? Maybe the other people are doing the wrong things. He's breaking the records. You know, we've got Sarah there qualifying for Team G GB. We've got Rich getting his pro card. You know, we're all odd. We're all strange. But you know those people that are going out and eating McDonald's and pizzas and, and getting um, particularly bloated and getting all their diseases? They're normal. You see, this is the thing. They're the normal ones. And there was a post, and I'm sorry we're behind with the comments. I'm trying to be fair to everybody that's bothered to turn up. Uh, this was a really fascinating comment for me, you see. Yeah. Uh, Raymond, I've just got another perspective on the value of the carnivore diet by listening to an interview with Brian Johnson. He's an American billionaire eating a vegan diet and taking 120 supplements wow. a day. Now, you know, that would make Rich's eyes uh, light up <laughs> if it was his electrolytes. But that's shocking, isn't it? If you've got to take, a I'm just joking, Rich. Uh, you know, if you're taking 120 supplements a day, then your diet. Well, obviously, is your diet is lacking, lacking, lacking you know, in all those nutrients. Things. I know. I think Raymond comments again about how much he spends uh, further down. I'm sure I read yeah, uh, going across the screen. Yeah, he's spending that much a year to optimize it's his health. Million. That's an obscene yeah. amount of money when it's all he needs is a farm, really, to rear some cattle. <laughs> That's what he should be buying with his money. Yeah. 
It's incredible, isn't it? And then we've got Adam there, by the way. He said, what makes me laugh is all these people saying red meat is bad for you. It's probably still go out on the weekend and fill themselves with beer and drugs, but that's fine. Uh, ukulele Al. Well, <laughs> assuming he plays a ukulele. Uh, never yeah. follow the science, but understand the science and follow, follow the money. Exactly. Right, so, yeah, exactly. Ukulele Al is uh, an incredible yeah. uh, guitar player. His uh, yeah. Instagram profile um, doesn't get much interaction, but he's um, he records himself doing different segments of um, parts of songs, and he puts it all together. So he plays the song, and and so he's basically every every member of the band. Um, incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I, yeah, I, I saw I, some videos of his. You you shared them, <laughs> didn't you? So yeah. so fair play. Yeah, enjoyed those. Are you still there? Yeah. 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 Uh, All right. Sorry. It sounds like it's not supposed to happen. Yeah, definitely, Adam. It's uh, that's right. So I'm just putting the links in the comments. If people are already members of the Mighty Networks, they can join the Fat Club. Oh, and (laughs) yes, um, Rich has put the joint the links in too. So yeah, plenty of links for you, but they'll be in the description. Um, Let's just go back to the questions. Oh yeah, so. I think one of the things about um, Christmas coming, and I know we were talking about this, you could look at Fat Club as a cha- as a challenge up to Christmas. You could join and you could get to know what to do. One of the things I always say when I'm coaching people is I'm quite a zero tolerance sort of person, but also realistic. So when you get to Christmas, the pressure is on for you to eat all the bad things. So, we, so the best thing is to mitigate all the problems, you know, things like eating your fats first and your proteins first. So you don't want any of the carbohydrates. So not, not only are you not ref, you, you know, under that pressure to eat everything, you don't want to anyway because you can say, look, I've just eaten a load of turkey, big bit of goose or whatever. Um, you know, I, I don't really fancy the potatoes. I, I personally am okay with being the weirdo. I don't mind that. You know, the meat to me is is the thing. I'm not overly bothered. But when I started, I was a bit tentative. So if you're starting out and you feel you're going to get pressure because you're not having roast potatoes and you're not having tons of bread and all this sort of stuff, that fat club can give you the confidence to argue your point. Or even you could say, look, I've got I've watched a brilliant video about fruit and veg. Can you stop giving me a hard time? So it's it's one of those things you could use to help you in social situations. I, I personally feel like when you are following something, I don't know about the other two in the room, but I am a consumer of people coaching me. When I wanted to know about kettlebells, I, I had some coaching. I even followed an American guy with a bodybuilding and did a 90-day thing. So I like being coached because I like the next day, that accountability. But that was all online, and, and, and much of it was um, not interactive. It was basically... You know, my coach would say, right, you've got to watch the video for day six, seven and eight. And then we'll we'll speak on uh, video nine, which is fine. Well, what we've got on the Mighty Networks there is you don't if you're shy, you don't have to get involved. You don't have to be online. You can just follow it. You can read it. You can drop comments. You can ask questions. You can uh, attend our, you know, live question and answers that, uh, you know, we do on Sundays. So you will get feedback and other members will also answer. So I, I would look at Fat Club as not only just a, a great thing to, to get you on the, on the on the road. I think the timing is perfect if you're thinking about dipping your toe in and you're worried about Christmas or Thanksgiving or something like that. It gives you all the tools to be able to say to yourself, actually, it's going to be better to um, learn how to say no. So even in the Fat Club, there is a bit about social situations, how to be a bit more confident how not to be that annoying person because you, you don't want to be the one that is doing what I'm doing now and waxing lyrical about it to everybody. You want to be the guy that people want to talk to. So um, I, I just, I just feel it's, it's very good for that sort of, that sort of thing. And um, Adam now, we can't stop him now. He's on starting after Xmas is just giving yourself a pass to eat as much junk as possible in the next few months, isn't it? And that's, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, but he said it in a sentence. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it gets you all prepped up and on the right course now. And I think that is one thing I definitely used to do when I was high carb. You know, I would always make excuses. 
constantly make excuses, even though I was running three times a week, 10 miles every, every time, you know, so I was running a lot of distance. I was a personal trainer, um, but I was getting tubia, coronary artery calcium scan, 639, low left quadrant pain, pre-diabetic, and I still made excuses. And the thing is, when you eat this way, you don't have to make excuses because it's brilliant <laughs> because the weight does stay off and it is tasty and it's juicy and it's, you know, it's, it's an incredibly enjoyable way of eating. It really is. And when you start losing the weight, I'm not going to say effortless, but I spent, you know, basically my fault is trying to lose weight and it was hard. It was difficult. Calorie restriction. I was hungry all the time. It doesn't work. My metabolism obviously slowed down. I've realized that now because I was giving myself, I was underfeeding myself. This way I can eat, you know, a fabulous breakfast this morning, you know, tons of scrambled eggs with butter. You know, I had sausage. It's fantastic. We got some fillet steak later. Yesterday we had a beef joint it was juicy and just, you know, just carving it. It was just it was wonderful. And the smells, you know, we've got a raw carnivore dog. You can have butter, you can have cheeses. Some people, you know, have some difficulty with dairy, but that's in every way of eating. But if you're all right with dairy, you can have all, all those sort of things as well. Um, pork chops, pork belly, lamb, you know, it's just so yeah. tasty. And I can remember eating my rice. Yeah, really, I did eat this rice cakes, uh, like cardboard with cottage cheese and thinking, wow, this is good. <laughs> it's just not there's no comparison and within half an hour i wanted to eat again and that was the classic thing I, i'd have my morning porridge skim milk orange juice great two hours later i'd have a sandwich <laughs> two hours later i'd have something else two hours later i'd have something else and and that's not the way this works this works in a way where you can eat your breakfast if you if you are one of those that eats breakfast and you're full and you, you're satiated and you're not thinking about food all the time. So yeah. um, just, you know, to, just to tag on to that, though, Steve, is um, just to reiterate to, to, to anyone listening who is thinking of beginning um, the Fat Club course, you don't have to be. This isn't a thing towards carnivore. Um, it's incremental changes and it's just making simple dietary changes. Um, and it's a lot easier than you would believe. Uh, and incrementing those changes week on week allows you to transition into a, a much healthier way of living. Uh, and as I say, you don't even have to be low carb keto or carnivore. After the course, there are little uh, snippets of information, life changing pieces of information that you can still take forward uh, and they will uh, exponentially improve your health and well being should you implement those moving forward, even without living the lifestyle. So, this is something for everybody. Uh, you don't certainly don't need to be carnivore or a strict keto. Um, yeah, it's a super easy course and ideal for anyone looking to to make a healthier change to to their health and well being. Yeah, definitely. And um, just just to add there, Rich, um, I was just I mentioned earlier that when I started, obviously I was um, low carb, um, then went into obviously keto. Is as you as you rightly say, is how far down the rabbit hole you go. Um, but when I was uh, low carb and then keto, like last um, Christmas, I made um, Christmas dinner for like my immediate family and, you know, my mum and other people who come who, do who don't eat low carb. But even though I could make low carb cheesecake, I made stuffing balls made of um, just um, sausage meat without any filler that the butcher gives to me, um, dipped in egg, dipped in pork pork rinds you know sage pork rinds and then wrapped in bacon in the end everybody wanted all of the keto things and they enjoyed them much more than you know normal things so there was you know less potatoes and um and things so you can have a healthier christmas dinner um and other you know christmas celebration meals um by having the low carb um, low sugar, more keto friendly meals. So there are options out there. And it's something probably I'll put in the Mighty Networks closer to Christmas as some recipes that you can use um, going forward for Christmas if, you, if you're um, keto, obviously not carnival. Okay. Oh, 
Brilliant. Should we wrap up there, guys? Um, I think we've covered everything. Considering we were only meant to do 10 minutes, I think we've done pretty well with 40, 45. <laughs> Never going to be 10 minutes, Rich. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think unless there's anything that anybody wants to add, I think we've we've covered um, the, the basics, haven't we? But it uh, will certainly be doing a lot more lives within you know these groups, but especially on the Mighty Network. So if you want to be part of that, Sign up to the Mighty Networks. Uh, links are in the comments. Um, but I'm happy to wrap up there, guys, if you are. Fabulous. Yeah. Thanks, Rich. Steve. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Brilliant. fine. There we are. Fantastic. Thank you all for listening. Uh, take care, and we will see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Please take time to like, share, or comment on the video. Your support is appreciated and really helps the channels.